Hello everyone and welcome to Making It On Mondays. Today we are going to be talking about the uterine lining again. We spoke about the uterine lining last week and uh, we spoke about, uh, you know, the things that we really need to know about was, uh, you know, just the setup for today. Um, and it was really the background information um, for today. Today, we're going to talk more practically about what it is that you can actually do um, to support your lining and to, um, to really help to have a healthy uterine lining. So my name is Louise Jeffrey. I'm an acupuncturist and I'm a coach. And I'm also you're making it on Monday's host along with Amy. So I hope you enjoyed last week's session. I hope you got a lot out of it. If you guys are on live with me, let me know. I'd love to know that you're here. If I can see the comments, I'll try and keep an eye on them. Um, and if you're on, um, on replay as well, just, um, just say hi. And uh, any questions that you have, please let us know. All right, so today I'm really going to try and keep this to 10, maximum 12 or 13 minutes. We're trying to make these short and sharp and punchy for you guys so that it doesn't take up a lot of your time to listen to them each week. So today we're going to discuss how you can best support your body in making a quality uterine lining. So we want to help you to make a lining that is conducive to implantation, to embryo implantation. And we're going to talk about the top four things that you can do to support your uterine lining. Now, I started out with six. That was the way that I was preparing it last week. But when I started to do it, I realized I'd got ahead of myself and my live prep went on for too long. So I actually combined them down and now we've got four things, right? So we're going to keep this short and sweet. We're going to focus on today the four things that support your uterine lining. Number one in the four things that support your uterine lining is a fresh food diet. Now, many of you will have heard me talk about diet in the past. I've talked about diet and fertility a lot. And you've heard me talk about how important the diet of the mother is to the development of the embryo, right? And it's also important subsequently too to the growing fetus in the early days of pregnancy. Now, what we know is that the mother's diet at this time, right, when we are just starting to create the embryo, can have a big influence on the risk of the development of chronic diseases later in the baby's adult life, okay? So essentially, Diet can actually change the pre-implantation environment of the uterus. And hence, it can affect the newly arrived embryo. All right. So what we really want to focus on is proper diet, because we know that diet has been shown to change the amino acid balance in the body and also in the uterus. Okay. So what we know about amino acids is that they play a number of physiological roles in pre-implantation development. Right. And the reason for this is because they're an energy source for the blastocyst, which is an early embryo. And they're also the building blocks for new proteins or DNA. The other thing that we know is that they can also act as antioxidants or cell signaling messengers. All right. And in the IVF process, in the IVF incubators, amino acids are really important components of the medium that the embryos grow in. Right. They utilize amino acids. Um, you know, it, it's a very important component of that, of that medium that the embryo is growing. So what this really means is that women who have diets that are based primarily on fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, with a little bit of fish, are much more likely to have a more favorable amino acid profile in the uterus than, for example, women who eat a lot of red meat and dairy. All right. So we know that what we eat affects the uterine amino acid profile, right? And what this means is that women who eat more fresh foods and less red meat and less dairy show a low amino acid environment. And it's thought that this may selectively support the development and the implantation of high quality embryos. All right. So all we really need to know about this, I've thrown a few kind of terms around here, is that a diet that is predominantly fresh fruit and veg along with some fish really better supports implantation in the uterus. Okay. Number two in the four things that support your uterine lining is to check for any structural impediments inside the uterus. Now, all we really need to know about this is that fibroids and polyps inside the uterus can hinder implantation. They don't always, but they can. So if you're not sure 
if your uterus is clear of impediments or not. It would be a really, really good idea for you to ask your reproductive specialist to do a scan of your uterus and to check things out. And if necessary, they can arrange for the removal of any polyps or fibroids that can be affecting your lining, right? Or any other internal structural impediments that may be affecting your lining. And they'll be able to tell you. We can't obviously tell you. We can just tell you what the potential might be. Now, there may be cases where the specialist decides that they think it's better not to remove the impediments. Um, you know, in the case of adenomyosis, for example, which is a form of endometriosis in the uterine wall, um, you know, that can infect implantation. Surgery is actually not an option, all right? Now, if this is the case, then many, act, then many patients really, um, they can opt for, for lifestyle and for some sort of herbal approach to treatment, such as acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine, all right? So there are other options if, um, you know, if, if we're not able to remove or your specialist is not able to remove uh, the fibroids or polyps or anything else. All right. Number three in the four things that support your uterine lining is to pay attention to the blood flow in the uterus. Now, what's important to know here is that a regular and problem-free menstrual cycle indicates that the ovaries are likely to be producing the right balance of estrogen and progesterone. All right. And we know that estrogen and progesterone are what help the uterine lining to develop well. Okay, and we know that uh, adequate levels of estrogen and progesterone are um, really important for the uterine environment to be ideal for implantation. All right. So if your blood flow isn't ideal, um, you know, if it's a stop start flow, um, you know, if it's very heavy, if it has, you know, medium to large clots, lots of dark blood, or if you've got moderate to severe pain, then we would say in Chinese medicine that you may have stagnation of blood in the uterus, right? Or if, for example, your periods are very scanty and light, or they're really short, like only a day or, day or two, we would say that you likely have blood deficiency, right? Now, these are Chinese medicine terms, and you don't need to worry too much about what they are, but we would likely use, um, in Chinese medicine, we would use electroacupuncture and we would possibly use some blood moving herbs if you had blood stagnation to regulate blood flow in the uterus and to support blood flow through to the uterine arteries. So if your blood flow is not, you're starting with fresh blood, medium flow for around four days or so, three to five days um, with no pain, anything outside of that is, is considered to be not ideal blood flow and needs to be looked at. So you can speak to your Chinese medicine practitioner about that. All right, and then moving on to number four in the four things that support your uterine lining is to reduce your stress levels. Now, why is it important to reduce your stress levels and what impact do they have on the uterine lining? Well, it's a well-known fact that stress affects the immune system, all right? And when it comes to fertility, our main concern is that stress hormones elevate the levels of activated T lymphocytes in the uterine lining, right? And what we know is that activated T lymphocytes are associated with a reduction in implantation rates, okay, in, in IVF. So you can see really how stress and stress hormones negatively affect the uterine lining and implantation. Now, there are many ways to reduce stress, and I've spoken about this topic on many past lives and workshops, um, you know, stress reduction techniques like meditation and yoga and exercise, they're really all great for improving our fertility, right? Reducing our workload, getting more sleep. But so too is acupuncture. And it's actually believed that stress reduction is one of the ways that acupuncture helps support the body to conceive and, and, and helps, um, you know, support our fertility. So to summarize today, and I've only been going for, for just under 10 minutes, so I'm pretty proud of myself. To summarize, here are the four things that support a healthy uterine lining. Number one, a fresh food diet, right? A diet that is, um, you know, um, predominantly organic if you can, um, or pesticide free, whole fresh fruit and vegetables, and a little bit of fish, all right? And avoiding uh, red meat and dairy. Number two is to check for any structural impediments inside of the uterus. So looking for polyps and fibroids, getting your specialist to have a look and be guided by his or her advice. Number three is to pay attention to the blood flow in the uterus. Really important. 
because um, if our uterine lining is not building and, and shedding as well as it should, it may not be the ideal environment for an embryo to implant. And number four is to reduce your stress levels. So as you've heard over the past two weeks, um, you know, this, the uterine lining is really a complex and fascinating topic, but it's not one that's talked about that often, um, you know, with fertility. I really hope you've enjoyed taking a bit of a deeper dive into the uterine lining. If you've got any doubt about your own lining um, or you've got any questions about, um, you know, what I've said today or what I even I said last week, feel free to please post the questions. I'd love to, to hear if you've got anything that you need to know. Um, all you really need to remember is the four things I've spoken about today when it comes to your uterine lining. But as I say, if you've got any questions, let us know. If there was anything that resonated with you, anything that's happened to you um, that might be helpful for other people to hear, please do let us know. Now, next week is Easter Monday, so there won't be any making it on Mondays. I'm taking the day off, but we'll see you back again on Monday, the 25th of April. So that's it from me, guys. I'll see you all in two weeks' time. Bye for now.